Hey everyone, so uh, I am not a mechanic. I am actually a teacher um, stuck at home during this uh, COVID-19 stuff. And uh, the, my van door, our van door, uh, a 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan um, was stuck. Uh, the passenger side uh, is not working properly and then the driver side uh, ended up quitting on us. And uh, at least on the passenger side, we could open um, it from the outside. Uh, you can't open it from the inside. It's stuck in the uh, locked position, um, but it does open from the outside. The uh, driver's door a couple days ago ended up uh, quitting on us as well. This is, seems to be a common problem with the uh, town and countries and grand caravans. So uh, uh, what ends up happening is the actuator, as a lot of other YouTube videos said, the actuator ends up getting a shot on it and uh, needs to be replaced. So this video is uh, replacing um, an actuator on a 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan. Uh, I try to show as much as the of the uh, disassembly as I can uh, and as much as the reassembly as I can as well. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comments below. Uh, I hope you find this useful. And again, uh, I'm not a mechanic. I just did not feel like paying um, a lot of money for labor uh, when I have the time currently to pick away at something like this. And I didn't feel like paying for uh, an overpriced part, which can be found uh, cheaper at other places as well. So I explain a little bit more of that in the video. But anyways, uh, here's uh, the uh, uh, video. Enjoy. So uh, just to begin, here are some of the uh, tools I ended up using for this particular video. Um, the only real, uh, I only needed a 10 millimeter uh, wrench on there on my torque wrench so 10 millimeter the whole time this was a former flathead screwdriver small one masscraft great product however uh, I reefed it in an area I probably shouldn't have uh, so that snapped obviously that's gonna happen this little uh, putty knife I put some electrical tape on it that helped me get the trim off the inside kind of pry it off I also used a flathead screwdriver and point parts um, but you gotta be careful with that so you don't scratch the plastic or anything. Uh, 15, 20, and a 30 torque wrench. Uh, or sorry, torque driver. Uh, I don't have any power tools as far as these go, so these came in quite handy. I use this little pick thing at times to reach into places that I couldn't get. Uh, and it really helped me with the black bar lining up the holes to get the nuts in or the bolts back in there. Uh, Phillips screwdriver was needed at the time and a couple flatties mostly the flatties were used for uh, the trim uh, The crowbar was used on one occasion too, but uh, you should be able to pop it off with uh, enough force that you don't really need a crowbar To do it and this is the old actuator Again, the uh, the new one is part six five five six two five nine. I got that from uh, Napa here in town and so that's the old one that's gonna be saved uh, and that's the uh, right side the passenger side sorry not the right side the passenger side which I'm gonna end up using again of course it never hurts either I have a Tim Hortons coffee to help you through moments like this so uh, give it a go take it nice and slow and I would highly recommend recording it as you go so you can look back and figure out where all the pieces go uh, when you're done this uh, area of the handle I took a screw, a torque screw up from there, number 20, and number 20 down from there. And those are silver, and the black one came from right in here. So the black one came. Slowly but surely prying this door off. This piece sits right, this piece sits right on there with uh, the clips going on. So eventually in time, that will clip back on there. And this is the piece that went over the door. Um, handle there so I'm hoping that I'm now able to pull um, the inside panel off Let's see how it goes so this is fun now I got the door panel off did not end up breaking any of the uh, clips that go in here um, they were quite tight but they should just pop right back in the way they're supposed to um, none are left behind and I didn't do much damage to it. The issue now is this, this mechanism is 
not supposed to go that far. It's not uh, moving the way it's supposed to to unlock in here. And I have all these bolts, which make me believe that I'm going to have to take off all of these things in order to get to the actual actuator, which is a huge pain in the butt. So, anywho. Just before I get too far in this, I want to make sure there's a bolt there. There, so that's two, three. There's a little ground there, so that's four and five. Six and seven. Eight. Nine. There. And one below there as well. So, that may bolt. Just so we're aware, I missed one screw in there too. One bolt. Holding that in. Just on the right side, so don't forget that one either. Okay, these three bolts came out of there. So, that's the last three bolts that need to come out. The actuator is just in there. So now I will try to uh, pull it out and I'm going to keep these bolts just down beside these other three here in hopes that I don't move it, lose them. And you'll also notice that I did take off this floor panel here. Clearly it needs a bit of a vacuum. But I'm going to try to pull this door off now. So just a note about the uh, power. Uh, that's going to the door here for the locks. There's nothing else really power in these doors. Um, this one particular cable is still giving me a bit of grief. And I don't know how to pull that out exactly, but we'll try to find it out. But I think next I'm going to try to pull that piece apart there. Well, it's the next morning and I just wanted, to, I'm going to start by pulling out that bolt right there. As I think that might be the last one. Still holding this inner piece in there. So I'm hoping that takes, that will free it all. So let's see. So I removed that nut. That's the nut that came out of it. And um, there's its twin. So those two go in the door. And I just stuck it over here for now. So we'll see how this pulls out. I realize with some of the cables being a little bit tight, I'm also going to take these two uh, torque bolts out. Um, hoping that frees up some of the cables on the inside. One thing to note with this is that there is another one hidden in behind this foam here to take out. So there are actually three. One, two, and three in behind there. The cable that's still attached to this thing um, had clips. You can see one little one down there that I've removed right there. So I popped that one out, and now I have to wiggle this one out as well. It just holds that cable that's connected here. That was just connected to the thing I just unscrewed as well. So I have to get that out now. So what I've noticed here is that uh, this piece is the one that was in the door that I just un undid. And it kind of sits up in there. That's upside down now. It kind of sits up like that, where the, the two bolts are at the top, the one that was stuck behind the styrofoam, the one below, that's in the door. So that's got to go in at some point again. Okay, I finally managed to get the uh, back part out after that. That's where the actual actuator is. Um, which apparently is the source of the problem based on other YouTube clips I've seen. Um, one of the challenging points, most challenging parts, was this was this piece here. Um, it is for 
um, glass to be held in there, but it does kind of sit on, sorry, it's kind of dark in there, but there's a ridge here and it spans the top as it sits in there. And there's one of the bolts that I took out from the door this morning already and another one down there. So that would be um, those last two pieces that I took out that I had to go to the outside of the door with. Um, you'll notice not every cable is disattached. There's one at the bottom there that goes to the bottom of the door. I did not take that out. Um, didn't want to mess with it. And this one here also plugs into the handle up top, um, the outside exterior handle. Um, some videos show that you could pull it out, but uh, yeah, I was not uh, I was not able to. So I stopped monkeying around with it. This whole this whole piece here, it was uh, really tricky to get this part out um, here, just because of uh, uh, it had to be wiggled and tilted at the right way. I I just got it out, and so pretty excited about that. So I'm gonna try to. Um, Disengage the electrical there and then take the actuator out and then really hope that it uh, works properly again once I have it all together. Uh, I am not a mechanic. I'm following videos on YouTube and just trying to problem solve myself. Um, this is probably making actual mechanics feel sick, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Just in on the actuator now. This was just a uh, a torque, uh, fifteen torque, number fifteen, um, to get that out there. Uh, and so I'm going to set it over there with some of the other ones because yes, I need to keep track of all these things. So now that should free up the actuator. What I've seen from videos is there are clips here that it needs to. Sorry, clips here and here that it kind of needs to sit in place. I've yet to pull this off, but I'm not sure if I can even do it with one hand, but we'll try. Um, just to look at the other side of this here. There's that handle that needs to be replaced and that, uh, or not replaced, but the part of the actuator. Um, and that's the part it slides onto, which I do believe is quite important. This piece slides along there. I wouldn't mind taking it off because it's a little bit in the way. Put it on again later, but I also don't want to take it apart too much. So, another very valuable tip where that orange piece is, it, that was the part that was hooked onto the um, rod that runs all the way up to the handle. That hooks into the handle on that white clip there. So the rod is now entirely free and is no longer plugged into the actuator. And this apparently is the piece that needs to be replaced. Um, as many of the YouTube clips said, uh, other YouTube clips out there, there is an arrow that shows how it's supposed to go on. And when you order these, there is a right and left hand side. So that is that. And also, it's a little bit hard to see, but right at my fingertip, there's a uh, silver um, protrusion there. And that has to go onto the other side of this actuator. It slips in there, and it works this, works that little device in there. So, make sure that goes back on there as well. So, I managed to get that disengaged. I had to use a... Uh, um, a flathead screwdriver just to push that piece there where my thumb is back in and then that was able just to pull off and I have the actuator out finally now it's time to go get a new one all right everybody uh, I managed to uh, uh, call Napa this morning so shout out to Napa who has curbside pickup during this time uh, and they had what I uh, needed. Here's the part number, 6556259. This is in Ontario, Canada as well, by the way. Um, 
It's a door lock actuator. Um, and as I am, so as I was saying, Napa sells it for 167 bucks. Uh, the dealership wanted uh, around 250 for it. Might have been even more, 280. I forget what they quoted me, um, but it was the labor that was the kicker. It was going to cost me 350 bucks in labor. I can understand it's a lot of work getting the door off, but uh, I wasn't ready to pay 600 bucks or so to uh, replace it, not during this time. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, and thankfully, videos on YouTube have helped at least get this out. Um, now it's all about getting it back together again. So I hope to show you that as well. All right, I'm back in the van now. Uh, I am going to have to turn, um, change the arm on that, because even as you look at this, you can see that this one is meant for the passenger side door, so green is for the passenger. This one needs to be on there. It needs to be sitting on like this with the red there to match this one that I took out. So, um, fun fact that I can share with you right now is that uh, I am working on my driver's side door, in case you didn't catch that yet. Um, but my passenger side door is also having the same issues. It can open from the outside, um, but from the inside you can't. So obviously with two uh, sliding doors that were not able to be opened from the inside, uh, we got five kids. And so we're crammed in here, and if anything should ever happen where we need to get out, um, I couldn't... I couldn't uh, couldn't not have doors functioning properly so I'm gonna get that uh, um, get my Phillips screwdriver and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that part off uh, just just one screw right here uh, and then that fits on again uh, onto there the, 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 the little arrow on the piece lines up nicely and so when I return that piece will be off Again, just take the screw out, take that piece off, and there are uh, teeth in here that make it line up all beautiful like, and then you screw that in together again, and all is well with this actuator, and then I'll try to piece it back into here. So there's that arm off right now, um, and the, uh, the white one with the red on it, uh, you can see the teeth right there fits nicely into those teeth there. So that will sit on there. I'll line it up and then put the screw back in. Just one thing to note with this, it is now on. You can see the R1 in the red uh, piece there, but uh, if I get in close on this, sorry, it might be out of focus, but there is a black um, marking here on the actuator. And on the arm, there is also a white uh, arrow. They point to each other. So that's how they pop on and they just kind of click together. Uh, and tightening the screw too, make sure uh, you don't tighten it too tight. They're just plastic parts and uh, you don't want to go too tight on these things. So now I'll try to get this back in. So the way I put this new actuator in is uh, you just gotta kind of wiggle it into, sp into spot making sure that if I show you on the old one making sure that that clips back on to that uh, silver um, arm that was back in there I managed to do that first and then it just sits there's a clip here on the new actuator and a clip here and it just sits right in there uh, and I'll replace the screw in a moment too so it's all screwed in um, and that's nice and tight and then I will hook up the uh, the rod, the silver rod that runs this way to the handle. I'll hook that back up into the new arm on the actuator and then I'll plug back in the power. Um, don't forget to do that as well or it's all useless. Just a reminder, there's a clip on the actuator that clips onto the metal piece there. There's a clip down here, sorry if it's hard to see, and this is a 15 torque screw that I had taken out before, that's where it goes in. I'm going to hook up that rod now and the uh, put the power cap back on, uh, the electrical, to the actuator here as well. If I'm able to, let me show you here something. 
Uh, that's the end of the uh, metal rod. It's got a click into, um, I don't think I can do it with one hand, but it's got to push in like that. And this black bar that comes out with it as well, um, it gets in the way here. But uh, if you just maneuver the rod around um, by turning it up at this end, I was able to get it in place. And now I just got to clip that bottom part onto the rod there. It should just push up and then it will snap into place. And that's how that arm goes back in. Um, the piece does clip up. Just keep in mind the white uh, arm on the actuator there. You are able to move back and forth slightly to give you a little bit of play. So, uh, yeah, that's that. And I'll reattach the electrical. And there that is. Uh, that, of course, just clips on and you push it down until you hear the clip. So, new actuators in place. Uh, it makes me kind of want to plug in the main power again and see if I um, if it moves like it's supposed to But I think I'll wait to do that until I get a little bit further along Now I have to work uh, The actuator bit. I don't know what the whole back assembly is called here But this part here, I've got to slide back into the door and then start uh, figuring out how to uh, piece it all back together, so I'll uh Try to give some tips as I learn along the way. Okay, just to be clear, I got everything plugged back up on the actuator. But uh, just let it be known that getting this piece back in, um, even get it that far, I had to wiggle it. The top part of the black bar has to go up into the tall side. So you got to kind of slide it in like this and then get it up like that um, with that black bar. I still don't have it in all the way. So, but working on it. One important thing I'm finding with uh, sliding this back in um, is that this rod goes up in the door somewhere and the bolt to attach it again there is there and down here. Um, you gotta make sure that these don't slip back and it becomes disattached, unattached, disattached, unattached, we'll go with. Um, from, there's another one here. So, um, just one of the problems I uh, ran into, this had slid this way, and the whole top part had become loosey-goosey, and uh, don't want to put it back like that. Okay, one thing I found with this is that uh, um, I got the actuator back into place, and I was able to put these three in there to hold it there for now, and I did end up getting, it's hard to see, but this bolt is in the bottom of that black rod again. But what I'm having a hard time doing is finding the top of that black rod. So I'm going to close the door, reach up in there, and try to get those holes lined up. I'm trying to dig around a little bit with this itty-bitty tool, but uh, I'm not even able to feel the bar. So we'll try to see what I can find uh, by reaching up in there. What I decided to do before I try to attach that top black bar again, uh, I didn't want to get it too secure before reaching in and doing uh, the inside part of the door as well. So just by reaching in through the top part, I lined up the holes with that piece and uh, gonna tighten these, including the one that's in behind here again, tighten those back into place and then that'll be good to go. Um, the cable that is uh, connecting it, don't forget to pop those back into the holes where they came from too, those little uh, pins, plastic pins to just keep the wire up and out of the way, I suppose. So plug those back into the holes they came from. Okay, after I have this part, um, I don't know technical terms, this uh, these torque, uh, they are 30 torque bolts, um, put back in. Um, I got this clip, which is was attaching to that piece on this wire here. I got this clip back in. I first thought it had to go in this hole here, but it definitely doesn't. It's got some sort of weird, that's where one of the bolts go. Um, I was going to call it a weird thread, but then I thought, oh, that's the bolts. So the two holes there and then right up here is where that plug goes in. And you just got to kind of reach around and pull through as best you can. Now I'll try, I'll try to do the one down at the bottom as well. Sorry for the bad camera work. Not a camera operator either. So just to be clear, I'm having a right hard time. I had plugged some out of the five bolts, the one down here. The two up here and the 
um, third, fourth, and fifth one that goes to the back of uh, here that can be accessed through the back of the door. I was having a hard old time trying to get up in there. What I found is that this moves slightly, but one of the trickiest parts I'm finding is getting this piece up in the door where it belongs. Um, I did have this bottom one bolted in, but I was nervous that I had lost these tabs here um, because I was feeling it wiggle, but it does have give like this. So I do have some wiggle room, so I'm gonna give it a try again. Hopefully seeing this and knowing this now, I will be able to get that top bolt back in. I have the bolts, I have the hole, I just have to figure out how to get it in there and secure, so. It helps to be able to know what I'm feeling when I reach in. Um, I was feeling this. I'd go a little bit further, but I could pull it back. If you get wiggle room on this thing, which I think the window is supposed to slide up in. Some of the other videos I saw um, with the uh, with the uh, power windows on these doors, which I did not want because it's just another thing to go wrong. But I do think this goes up in there alongside the window. It's just uh, managing to get that back in nice and snug the way it's uh, supposed to be. So I'll give it a shot again. Okay, people. Um, my regular job is not uh, too hard of a job. This is uh, um, up there probably of one of the hardest things I've had to do as far as work goes. Um, but I did manage. Um, what I did was, so again, three bolts, uh, the, the torque, 30 torques, three right there. There's another one. Oh, sorry about that. There's another one right down here. That's just a, uh, a hex head. I think it's like a 10 millimeter or so. And another one up here. That connects the black um, rod in behind. And so I'm really hoping it's still all attached. But what I did was I had these three out, bottom one out. And I first tried to attach the top one. I finally got it into the thread by reaching my arm in behind the panel, reaching up and around and trying to line up this hole. Um, then I went from that one, um, I got my finger back in here, pulled that good and tight. Uh, the actuator sits in back in here. And so that's good. Make sure you keep the little child proof lock thing. Make sure that pops back out too. And then once I had those three uh, somewhat snug, I hoped I took that hex that, uh, not a hex, but it's kind of like a hex bolt. Um, that bolt put in here and success, it also caught as well. So my suggestion, what worked for me was to do the top one, um, these back three, and then that lined up. So now the panel's uh, roughly in place. Um, I'm just gonna make sure all the wires are hooked back up before I get too far. What I did also have to do as I pulled it back out, I took this piece, oops, sorry. I took this piece out again. I just wasn't able to uh, maneuver that black bar, but uh, man, oh man, that black bar was the uh, definitely the worst part of the job so far. All right, just a couple pointers here. Um, that last bolt for the back, uh, tighten that up, just hand tight. Um, I got those three back in there. Remember the one that's tucked in behind there as well. A little bit hard to see, but there's a third one in there. Um, reattach the cable plugs, which are this thing and this thing here. Cables. Um, for a box like this, just make sure the wires are tucked back. I just removed, not removed, but... Uh, adjusted some of them so that I would have a little bit more give in moving things around and I started putting the main bolts all of these bad boys back in there will be um, quite a few around here I'm gonna plug in the power soon down there and uh, test her out um, might also hook back up the handle as well I oh, just gotta get this rod back in the right location. But you see it's moving the way it's supposed to now. So I'm still hooked up to the actuator back there, which is kind of exciting. 
again, not a mechanic, but uh, just trying to take some uh, footage of how things are going, uh, taking it apart and putting it back together again, just being as meticulous as I can be in uh, recording this. So uh, when I have to do it on the other side, um, it's going to be easy peasy. So I'm going to actually test it out before I have all these bolts back in. I have one now just kind of holding it in place. I'll put another one in there just holding it in place. Um, I'll wait with the other ones until I uh, give it a test. So I'm going to test it, see how it goes. Okay, people, so if everything went uh, as planned, I have the power hooked back up down there. Um, all the wires are back. Some are still dangling. I just have to reattach those. But I'm going to try the remote to unlock it and lock it, and that uh, rod should move there. So there is unlock. There's lock. Unlock. Lock. So that rod is moving, and I'm happier than a pig in mud. So reattach these uh, bolts and then uh, put the inside door frame back on. It's not a door frame. It's the plastic part that came off at the start. So we're getting closer. So again, this is the inside door handle. Um, I'm going to uh, make sure you just put the rod uh, down into it first and then this part swings over and clips on like that you'll hear it click and that will be secure as I'm going over this I'm just wanting to make sure that I have those bolts in the right spot because it looks like I might have done that wrong get those bolts out and put them through there just to add more security that would actually look to be the way it's going so I'll make sure I get that uh, back together again. All right, she's coming together. Um, one thing I wanted to note was most of these 11 bolts, I took those ones out because I have to reattach the handle there. Um, there's one down there, one down there. Anyways, most of these are the same size um, and look like that. I don't know the number or anything like that, but three of them are shorter. Um, I found that the... Three shorties go one here, one here, and then on the ground here is another shorty. This is a regular side one, size one. Uh, it seems to matter. Um, I would just keep track of the bolts as you take them out um, based on the size, but I'm pretty sure it's gone back together nicely now. But this is a uh, short, short one and a short on the ground there. All the other ones are regular size. So... Now I'm going to reattach this handle again. I uh, had undone it because some of these bolts actually go through the handle, through this uh, panel that we, sorry, through the handle and attach back there. So we'll get that done now. So we got the handle. One second, I'm going to try to flip this. We got the handle back together again. Um, just remember that this bolt goes through the piece on the handle. This is the inside handle that unlocks the back and um, a bolt goes through that into the back panel as well same thing down here another bolt so it attaches both those pieces and then the one on this side as well so there's three actually holding this handle in that makes sense because people reef on it and then all I have left are these uh, three screws and um, I know some of them are used to hold the uh, interior piece in. Um, I just have to go back in my videos and remind myself which ones, but uh, they're all they all look like 15 hex. The only three I have left, so best not to have leftover parts. So we'll try to figure this out. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you: lock. That's uh, unlock, lock, lock, unlock. Lock. Okay, I'm pretty excited that uh, this is coming back together. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so for getting this interior piece back on, 
obviously those green clips on the back, they need to line up with the holes on the uh, inside of the frame. I just started at the bottom, did a little bit along the bottom, did a couple around the handle here. Um, the top part, you have to kind of bend a little bit and tuck it, um, kind of bend down and uh, lift and push uh, a bit to get it to fit in here. And this trim has to go on top um, to snap some of the back ones in. I had the door open and uh, did it from the back there where I could reach it. And the bottom ones I just uh, laid down made on the ground, made sure they were lining up. And uh, now that door shuts and uh, gonna put the final screws in, return this, sorry, I wasn't looking at the thing. Return this to the spot and put that place, uh, place that back up in there as well. Hopefully that goes. So I'll show you it one more time when I'm all done. Just a reminder here that uh, 15, number 15 torque, uh, silver one goes up here. Um, another one goes down here, um, part of the handle, and the black one goes right in there. So those are all hand tight. Uh, again, be careful of the plastic. Um, and now all I need to do is pop this back into place. And I don't know how easy that's going to be. So I'll get that done and then show you uh, that it opens again from the inside. Hopefully, let's see. So let's go over uh, let's go over a few things here. Now that I have the uh, the cover for the handle back on, that just uh, pops back in. Um, you basically get it into place around the handle and the uh, locking mechanism here, which does now freely go back and forth. It did not before when the actuator was shot. I had to really force it forward. Um, the problem with my door was uh, that was not moving back and forth, so it was basically stuck in the lock position. Um, I started pulling it apart um, to. Uh, um, I started pulling it apart to uh, get inside to try to pull on that handle, the uh, iron rod. Sorry, the rod on the inside to um, get her to open. I did eventually end up getting it to uh, open by forcing um, it forward and um, pulling on the handle from the outside. Um, some videos suggested that if you are having an issue with it uh, being locked and not being able to be opened, you can take for the most part, uh, see the trim along the bottom I still have to put on and I still have to put on that piece uh, yet as well. But uh, those things should just snap back into place and are uh, more so just to seal it up nicely. Um, but uh, this now, if you watch, um, I'll hit my unlock and lock on my keys. And those are working just fine. Uh, if I go to the unlock position, I reach forward and the door opens again. So that was a success. Um, so would I say anybody could do it? Um, quite possibly. I think uh, I've saved myself, again, as I mentioned before, uh, the actuator was $167. Um, the labor and time uh, for myself, it probably, I did a little bit last night and then some now this morning. Uh, in total, it probably took me about four or five hours, but uh, again, I've never lived through this. Um, so I was trying to take my time and go slow and I, I needed to take a, a lot of breaks too because it's a lot of bending and uh, on your knees and uh, um, my back uh, ached. So uh, prepare for that as well, but uh, I think you're able to do it. So uh, give it a shot. I'm gonna piece this video together after this and hopefully show enough step by step. If you have any questions, you can uh, leave them in the comments below. So I have one functioning door again in my van. The other side, I will do uh, another day. Uh, again, uh, shout out to Napa for having the part I needed. They only had one in stock, so I used that uh, on the driver's side door. 
um, at least on the other side, we can still open from the outside. So uh, that is uh, all for now. So feel free to uh, subscribe and, and share. Um, I really wish uh, Dodge would have done something uh, with these uh, this issue. Um, somehow, maybe the actuator could be uh, not from China and a little bit of a better built part that it doesn't uh, fail, um, as so many people are experiencing with their uh, caravans and uh, the town and countries. Um, I've seen a few of these videos um, with uh, uh, the town and country, so thank you to those videos. The, the parts are, for the most part, generally the same. Um, but yeah, it... Uh, whether it's a town and country, apparently from uh, 2000 to 2007, this is a, a 16, um, 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan. And so, I mean, we're talking four years old uh, and that actuator uh, was shot. So it's not a common problem that just started happening. Uh, so, but they're making a good uh, penny off of it when they're charging 300 plus dollars for uh, labor and uh, 250 or so for a part that's not worth 250 again look on amazon see if you can find the exact same part for less and get it delivered to you at some point uh i couldn't wait uh for amazon to deliver it uh based on the covid stuff going on and also uh yeah i'd like to drive around with my family to get out of the house uh so that's all for now uh thanks for watching i hope this was useful um what i didn't find on the internet was i found a i found a bunch of people taking it apart um, not everybody showed, uh, a lot of detail. I tried to be as detailed as I could. And, uh, I also tried to show putting it back together because some people had videos of it really well done, but did not, uh, did not show it being put back together. And so I wanted to, uh, do that for you as well. So, um, now I have this recorded, I'm going to put it on YouTube and, uh, probably use it again in the future when I have to do, uh, my passenger side sliding door and, uh, yeah, now I can offer to help uh, friends, perhaps, uh, to fix their sliding doors without uh, charging them a bunch of money. So, all right, have a good one. Take care. Hi. All right, just to show you one more time from the outside now. Um, the issue I was having was this handle would not uh, open from the outside. It's obviously in the locked position now but it wasn't even un in the unlock, it wasn't unlocking at all. So inside, outside, I could not uh, open the door. Now, when I hit the unlock, we have uh, actuator working again. Um, if I might suggest, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before you put the bottom trim back in, uh, stick a vacuum to it, because there's all different sorts of wonderful things that uh, get down in there. And so uh, not a bad time to uh, do a little vacuuming before you put it back together.